Do you get overwhelmed just thinking about all the choices you have and decisions that you have to make? Do you let fear and a lack of confidence in yourself stop you from taking that leap or making a decision? But could it be that you're just one decision away from the life that God wants you to have? Let's talk about it. Hey, hey, everybody. Happy Friday. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate you for being here. Last Friday, I shared part one of the multiple choice life. And today we're going to continue that lesson by discussing what stops us from making decisions and how we can make the best choice. So let's jump right in and I'll start by posing a question. When we're presented with different choices, what stops us from deciding? And I have three possible reasons. Number one is the fear of making the wrong choice. We often think of what happened the last time or how something didn't work out in our favor, how the choice that we made ended up breaking our heart or setting us back. We're afraid to choose the wrong thing or the wrong relationship or the wrong opportunity, so we allow fear to paralyze us and stifle our growth. But we all know that God did not give us the spirit of fear, but he gave us the ability to make sound and wise decisions. The second reason could be a lack of confidence in ourselves. We don't believe that we're capable. Maybe because we failed in that area before, you, someone we know, they tried it, it didn't work for them. We sometimes focus on our inadequacies, that we don't have enough knowledge, we're not skillful enough. We don't think we're smart enough or we have what it takes to be successful. And some of us don't even believe that we're worthy of God's best. The third reason is the lack of faith in God. We don't believe that God is credible or trustworthy. We don't think he's going to come through for us and we're tired of getting our hopes up only to be let down. It's easy for us to believe for others, but we can't believe for ourselves. We say we have faith, but we actually don't put it into practice. Hebrews 11 and 6 the NIV translation states, And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. How do we make a decision? I have three suggestions. Number one, we must weigh our options. We got to consider our choices, do our research, compare and contrast the pros and the cons of each choice. Talk to somebody who has more experience with a particular situation than we do and think about the long-term implications. Which choice is going to get us closer to our goals? Which choice will honor God and let's refuse to make a decision based on how we're feeling in the moment? Philippians 4, 6 through 7, the NIV translation states, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The second way, we must tap into God's strength and power. We've got to ask God for wisdom and strength and pray and wait for him to answer. We've got to be willing to accept his answer, even if it's not what we would choose. Now, the final decision is going to be ours, but I found that God is never wrong. It's not required, but based on my experience, it's wise to ask for God's help. Through God, we have more power than we realize, but we just don't use it. James 1, 5, NIV translation states, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. The third way is that we got to renew our minds. We got to have a Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 mindset, change the way we think about our lives and what's possible for us, take control of any thoughts that want to steer us in the direction of our downfall and think about what we're thinking about. If our minds are always dwelling on doom and gloom, then our choices are going to reflect our thoughts. Negative thoughts will not produce a positive life, so we've got to adopt the mindset of Christ. I say you always have a choice. If you don't like the life you're living or the results you're getting, then just choose differently. If you've done something repeatedly and aren't making any progress, then it's time to reassess your life. You can change at any moment you decide to. That's the beauty of it. If you're not happy, happy with your health or your finances, your relationships, your thought life, then change it. That is the freedom that God has given to us. But you can't be jealous of someone who's making choices that is leading them towards wholeness and God's plan for their life, for we all have that same opportunity too. You might be saying that you don't have a choice, but I beg to differ. If we're followers of Christ, we always have a choice. Your tomorrow doesn't have to look like your today or your past. 
But we have to be honest with ourselves. Either we don't like the requirements of the best choice or our flesh is enjoying the choices that we've made and we just don't want to give it up. We don't have a right to complain if we're unwilling to make adjustments. And we all know the definition of insanity. And if we want different, we got to do different. The anchor scripture for this lesson is Deuteronomy 30 and 19. The NLT translation states, Today, I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. Based on the scripture that I just read, the good news is that you do have a choice. So let me ask you, will you choose blessings or curses? Will you choose to love or to hate, to forgive or to hold a grudge, to pity yourself or walk in purpose and power? Will you choose faith or doubt, fear or courage? Will you be patient or will you be desperate? Will you be bound to your past or will you do the work to become free? Will you choose to complain or to be grateful? Will you blame others or will you take responsibility for your actions? Will you choose to walk in pride or to humble yourself? Will you choose to pray or will you choose to worry? Will you choose to dwell on your past or will you focus on your future? Will you choose God's word or the opinions of man? Will you choose eternal life with God or life apart from him? Choose wisely. And the good news is it's never too late to make the best choice. In closing, God has given us the answer to every challenge we will ever face and for every decision that we have to make. He doesn't take away our power to choose, but he does take the guesswork out of it. In this multiple choice test called life, we have the answer key, which is the word of God, our relationship with him, prayer and worship, and this will guide us in every decision that we have to make. And as we live out our multiple choice life, and if we don't know the answer, let's make sure that we consult the one who does, because God delights in giving us the answers that we need to make the best choice. And he also loves handing out A pluses, a score of 100%, and a smiley face. And let's acknowledge him in all of our ways because I've found that life is so much sweeter when we do. Thank you so much for hanging with me. If you made it to the end, as always, I appreciate you. Any takeaways, please leave me a comment. I'll be sure to reply. My website, podcast, and social media platform information is in the description of this video. I will see you next Friday. In the meantime, remember that you matter. In Christ, you are enough. You are never alone, and most importantly, you are eternally and unconditionally loved. Until next time, take care.